guys, welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset, where we help you bulletproof your mind through health, fitness, and entertainment. So today's episode, we talk about 10 reasons or 10 things we wish we knew before we started lifting. So I'm sure you're going to gain a lot of experience. So it's an entertaining episode. Let's get stuck into it. <laughs> What's happening? We are meant to be the pinnacle of health Health, fitness. fitness, I know. But this is why, so... This is why you don't sit in a studio office with a sick boy. <laughs> I don't think I've passed that, do you? I don't think it's a coincidence. Do you, do you really think I passed that to you? Aye, you passed something to me, aye. You stopped kissing, mate. That's aye, you stopped... You stopped... Like, um, stop so I was, I was looking at some analytics on the podcast, right? And there's 96% people in the UK that listen to this. Aye, right? I did like see audience. that. So there's then 4% of the world that listen out with, mm-hmm. out with the United Kingdom. So if you see this here, this is a Sports Direct mug. This is a gallon of tea. Like this <laughs> it's like endless I, 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 love, I love the mug. <laughs> so, some mug. I've just made those two cups of teas to get to get us through this podcast, aye, but aye. no days off. We want to stay consistent for you guys. Always make sure that we're releasing podcasts every Monday and every Thursday. Um, and and I think that's something to take into. I think that's something to take into your life. Just be consistent. It doesn't need to be the absolute best work you've ever done, <laughs> but if you're consistent, and then you go into the next day, and you're like, I still done it. And when you're feeling so much better, you smash it again. So I, just, I literally just done a check in before this as well, and in the check in, I said. Um, and I'll, I, where did I hear this quote? It was, I think it was a bit, one of the books that I read about nutrition, and it was like, the only way you can guarantee failure is by giving up completely. Oh, and I love that quote. So I was saying to this guy that he had a shit week, and he didn't track his food, and he was saying all oh, this, he's no motivation, and blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, look, I went back in the month of January, and he's got seven workouts in, which might not seem like a, a big deal to like the, the hardcore fucking bodybuilders and stuff like that but there are seven more workouts that he done in the whole entire year last year mm. right so this is what I try to say to him like look that's a fucking massive uh, win yeah, that's yeah. a huge step mm. he went into the gym on his own so again like it's he like, can be so caught up like oh I'm not tracking my calories I'm not hitting my steps I didn't get the workouts in that I said I would do but as long as you keep fighting you keep pushing through uh, then that's that's the only way you can go so that's, that's actually something I was, I was only speaking about the other day what I get one of my, my clients to do in, the, in their check in as well I say Tell me a small win that's non fitness related. And so one of my clients all week said, I don't I can't think any. And I, I done a check in with her and I said, Look, you've got two wins, you went to the gym four days a week and uh, you're telling me you done nothing else apart from that. Mm-hmm. So you, she's saying her wins up once a night. And I went, see any new day through the day and you're up once during the night with a kid, try to get them back to sleep, it's a win. Mm-hmm. I said, You need to understand that that's a win. And if you understand that that's a win, then other things become a win, and then you go right. I'm going to chase the win. You all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, no, so I was, no, so I, I was get, getting people into the mindset that look, chase the smaller wins, and you continually win, continually right. win. It's, and if if you can't see that all these things are small wins, then you're never going to chase anything. Right. You need to you need to understand that the, that's a win, so you're going to chase more. No, spot on. Um, and this was another thing I done in his check in as well was. I was saying that if you look at my left hand and my right hand, because obviously you guys that are watching on YouTube, this will be easy to understand, but my left hand I'm holding up higher and this is all the bad behaviours that he's built, not over the last year, over the last four, five, six years. Aye, aye, aye. And in the month of January, the good habits that he's building is down here on my right hand, so I'm holding that lower for mm. anyone that's listening. And over time, all we're trying to do is stack up those small wins until they match and then overtake it. Aye. And that's what I was, so I've sent that to him, so hopefully that gives a gives the, the guy a wee bit more encouragement to say, you know what, fuck, aye. I'm winning. Might, might I'm not winning. be where I want it. It's like us with our podcast and with fitness and with with clients, aiming, we want to like, coach, we want it now. Yeah, when you, you're setting up you, the gym, you want it fucking You always now. want better. I, there's no one person on the planet who doesn't want better. No, Everybody no. wants to be better. Don't get me wrong, I was editing uh, the episode that just got released today, yesterday, and I'm looking at the analytics. That's the only reason I knew that, that stat, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, Phew. I was like, only like 50, 60 views and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, why am I getting caught up in this? Mm. Why do I want success now? Oh, and I was listening to Mind, Mind Pump the other day, uh, Mind Pump this morning, they've just released their 2000th episode over eight years. And they said, if we were trying to chase success, like some of our biggest episodes blew up three years down the line. Yeah. Um, Alex Ramosi just said something similar the other day when he's like, his gym, his gym series of episodes as well. Um, so it's like, I don't know what it is with human nature. We want things. Well, what is it with Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast was making shit YouTube videos for ages, and then he just he kept going and he kept learning, and then all of a sudden he just knew it was done. Yeah. And his first big, he said, he said to somebody, 
give me 10 grand, I'm going to eat something if I do. And the person's like, nah, 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 I'm not going to do that. He's like, just, right, give me five. And he says, I'll put the other five in and I'm going to walk up to somebody and get them the video and I'm going to blow up. Because he said he'd made that many videos that he understood the analytics and he'd watched that many videos that he understood how to get it big. Aye. And that was his first big video. So it took him years and years of learning to go, right, I can do this now. So he got five grand off some investor and he put five grand in his cell and he went up and gave it to somebody and his video blew up. Aye. And then he was big for there. But that just wasn't his first video. That was like a couple of years in. I know. The I other know. ones were in his bedroom, just know, talking just, to a camera, it, looking like an idiot. And he was there was one that he said Logan Paul's name. How many times? Mm. Like something like. Aye, it, it was for ten dollars. Right? It was like a hundred thousand times. Aye, Logan he just Paul, kept going. Logan Paul, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, and that was because this, this is just how he was like. If I do this, like nobody else is going to do this. Aye, so aye, he aye. always wanted to kind of prove wrong. I like. I actually want to do something, Mr. Beast, on as well. Like he done a video when he started YouTubing. I don't know if you know this. Like, and he scheduled it to release in five years' time. Aye, 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 aye. Know that, aye, aye. In twenty years' time. Aye, aye. And I was like, I love that idea. I want to do something, mm. something like that, just to kind of. It keeps let you accountable. Out, aye, to see like what. It keeps what, him accountable. What the fuck's he, he goes right. I'm, I, that's going to go up in five years, whether I like it or no. Aye. So I need to be a better version of me. Exactly, because it's going to come out and it's going to be funny to look back at that. But the 20-year one, he says, look, I might be dead in that. And he goes, I'm pretty sure in that. He says, look, if I'm dead, then cool, hopefully I've lived a good fucking life. But you don't need to be sad that I'm not here anymore. Aye, I think that's, that's quite mad. Like, technology's fascinating now, I think. Like, so on one hand, there's a, there's a dark side of technology that we all speak about getting consumed with. But yeah. there's another side, like, it's quite, like, imagine, like, being so fortunate to have a tool where you can document if your you can journey. Use it, if you can use it properly, it can take you so many places. Like, like we've got obviously this shared YouTube channel, and when you go on it, all you're doing is learning because mm -hmm. you've got all the business so people, much. and you're just Aye. even when you're watching YouTube shorts, which are just small and engaging. You're going, ah, oh, here, look, I could probably put that in my business. How different is YouTube shorts on the joint business? Oh, so so on, on my page is like for straps. Aye, aye, aye. On the business page is like Alex or <laughs> And I was like, ah, I'm going to stay in this page. Ah, yeah, that's what I do. I don't even go to my other one anymore. It goes, it goes to the power though. Like what you consume in your brain, you really need to. Sh you can change the algorithm. Oh, the information aye, aye, aye. Have. I'm sure in this, I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm sure in China they fucking consume, they restrict. Like like their TikToks and or their equivalent of TikToks and I stuff like that. that. It's more educational mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's that, that's, that's what that's I heard that as clever. well. I said like obviously TikTok is Chinese, but mm -hmm. in China they don't run it the same. They don't Aye, allow they it to the, run the same. They give the dumb stuff to like to the, the Americans, the, the Western side Aye. of the world, Aye. and then the Eastern side of the world they're keeping it to like educational. So Aye. they're getting us dumber. We're fucking consuming information too so quick. It's right. like you, you you don't learn anything on TikTok. And I think one thing I always say to myself as well is everybody else I said, if you've got to do something, learn something every single day. Yeah, try, and, try and feed your brain just like you, you feed yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say something else there. Oh yeah, just on the on the, the, the joint page and stuff like that. So um, when I was editing the video yesterday, I was like, man, the lighting's pretty good, isn't you? Like, it's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> it's good. crazy the difference of that. But if you're listening to today's episode, hopefully this the audio, audio is better. Is better. So, um, I don't. I, I don't think the audio was bad. Another one, but when you compare it to the the studio that we had, the G Four, obviously the guys have some of the best. In fact, they do. They have the best kit about. Yeah. Um, so it just goes to show that um, I, even though we think these mics are pretty good, when you compare it to like the other stuff, we're mm. like, oh man, we sound this so will be sexy. A, this will, oh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with confidence here, but this will be a lot better. This way, aye, aye, definitely. Um, I think this weekend because this is when payments start coming in from from clients and stuff. So. Um, using any kind of extra penny. Well, Australian's birthday coming up actually. Nah. <laughs> need to, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe might need to get Jillian something nice first. Maybe just unless you might be homeless. Ah, uh, that's true. That's aye, true. Aye, aye. No, I'll put I'll put I'll put some money aside for that. But every other bit of penny is going back into this business. So I want to get some chairs. These chairs are all right, but I thought that's not like bad. Sitting on them, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a wee bit. Of <laughs> I just hit my funny bone there. I, <laughs> I, 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 I like, skilled oh, my funny bone the other day, so I can't <laughs> even sit <laughs> it on anything. Right, yeah. so let's get into the main topic. The main topic is what's the first thing that you say when you used the gym? What is the first thing that you've changed your mind on that you you, you definitely got wrong all the way back? Aye, so I think I think there's definitely a market out there, or some. It'd be good to communicate with the years of experience that we've got. Of starting out our own fitness journey making, and actually training other people and making loads of mistakes. In yeah, the way. yeah. So um, we've trained people who have worked out in the gym, but we've also trained new people in mm -hmm. the gym as well. So what we've done today is we put together a list of one, two, I think it's eight points of things that we wish we knew 
before we started training. Mm -hmm. So let's get into point number one, which I think probably holds the the like out, all these other points are important. But when it came down to programming for me and following a routine, that was the biggest thing. Like uh, we spoke about this before, like going into the gym and going. Right, let's hit legs and then naturally you just start hitting arms. Mm. <laughs> you know you what do. I mean? Like, you do. You do. Like all these things. Back in the day, it's just chest and arms, man. Like, making it up. It's not even up. a joke. Like, chest and arms is the the big thing that most guys go to. And Shoulders girls and did the opposite. Aye. They're like, right, let's hit back. Nah, nah, nah. We'll hit legs. We'll hit, le we'll hit arse. There's still, like, I done. I actually done an arm day the other day and I've not done that in ages, man. Ages, man. But it's weird how my mind shifted that because I used to love that it's day. So boring, man. I used to do that. Exactly. So That's boring. exactly. I was like, it's quite hard to get the same sort of stimulus that Aye. squats or deadlifts get you. Um, don't get me wrong, same doesn't arms, get you in that place. But one thing I did like was the pump I had. Right? So I actually was like, took my top off, and I was like, fuck man. Okay, Where were you in here? Do you have in here? Yeah, yeah. And I ran into that mirror. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking juicy arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, but following a workout program or following a routine where you go in and you're getting consistent lifts, um, a big mistake everyone made, or a big mistake I definitely made, and I saw it in the gym floor as well, was people just sort of winging their way through. And the reason that this, like, there's there's an element to this where the first couple of weeks, if you're starting out in a gym, you got your you're 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 experience gonna be, in the you're gym, make the games anyway. experience in the environment and stuff like that. But when it comes to following a routine, that actually helps you implement the most important rule when it comes to working out, which is progressive overload. Yeah. Going in and doing a set of eight reps of whatever it is that you're doing. This is the thing as well. Like there's so many workout routines, there's so many programming, so many free programmings, paid programs out there. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you follow that program consistently, you will see results. Uh, 100%, 100%. There's that thing, like a, the best program the world followed inconsistently is still far, uh, sorry, the best, the worst program in the world followed consistently still outmatches the best program in the world followed in consistency. 100% it does. So it all comes down to consistency and that workout program gives you a space to um, level up each session, do more reps, do more sets, do more weight. Because um, no matter if it's shit, yeah, as you <clears> said, you're progressively overloading, you are getting better at whatever it is over the four weeks, six weeks, whatever it may be. Whereas before, you, you're possibly not getting better at anything because yeah. when you start the gym, your intensity can be there on a couple of days, but it falls off pretty quickly if you're no if you're no on your ball. No, hundred percent. And that actually just reminds me another point that we've not got in this list. When it comes to the reps and sets that you do, um, half reps, quarter reps, Aye. full range of motion definitely has to be up there yeah, alongside yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you ever mind like cheating your reps, or do you? I've always been a kind of full range of motion man. I was going to say because you never really spoke about it before. No, I've always been a full range of motion man. That's one of the things that I did. I done everything else on this price. list. <laughs> Absolutely done Good wrong, but I've always been a full range of motion man, especially in squats. Aye. Especially, I could always like, get ass the grass with poor mobility. Oh, I've got to speak about that, but it was with poor mobility. I never worked on mobility. I never even thought about mobility. But it was always trying to get ass the grass. Mm -hmm. Probably hurt my lower back in the process with shitty yeah. form. Yeah. But like I would always try and go full range of motion and I think that's why like when I always used to see people get like bigger benches than me. You know, as you were saying in the other so podcast. Me, me. You were like me. you were like going in above your chest. Three well, I was I would chest. always touch my chest. Would you? Yeah. And I'd be like, fuck man, how can I not get in there to watch seven that? But mate, it can't be that much harder, but when you put it right to your chest, it's so much <laughs> fucking harder. The biggest thing was, was bicep curls and shoulder press was the one that stuck out to me. Aye. My shoulder press and I'm like, I fucking hit the forties and I'm like I'm not, even doing, I'm not even fucking hitting the muscle, man. Aye, barely, barely. barely. Man. And you see, that's probably a common one. Bicep curls as well, like cheating the rep, no fully Aye. extending the arm. Mm -hmm. um, and 100%, 100%. The, the, reason, the reason that Everybody still, is, even like your clients in that, that's the first thing they'll cheat on is bicep curls, mm. probably. Because they're like, right, well, he's telling me to squat to death, so I need to. But a bicep curl, it's like, I'm, I can still see you. I can still see you're cheating the bicep curl. <laughs> I'm like, put your arm out of the way, done. I'm not, so, why do they, I don't know why everybody does, everybody does it. I know, no, no. But the reason I bring up range of motion is because if you don't know, if you focus on your range of motion, the pursuit of focusing on that will lead you to better gains, stronger body, more resilient joints, oh, right, and 100%. overall, better quality of life. Yeah. And that's something I didn't really piece together until Oof, no longer. three, four years. I think Oof, well, for me, you've less. Aye, three, four years into my training, I started doing like full range of motion. I used to slag my mate. Aye. I used to go to the gym with. He's at shoulder press the fifties, and I goes, "You didn't?" He? I was like, "You lifted the fifties up." I had arguments. Shut I, I had arguments with people for that similar reason. So this is the but uh, I lifted that, and I'm even more in that mindset now. See, people will say PR. 
I'm like, is it your PR? But it's no a PR to me. What's well, um, that just remind me actually? I wanted to uh, bring this up and talk about it. Do you when you deadlift and you get your explosive up, and then the folk who just drop the bar at the top? Do you count that as a deadlift? A deadlift, aye. You would, aye. You know, I think I think a complete deadlift is actually bringing down. Like well, I'm talking about drop at the top of the rep, no holding it all the way down. I mean, they've completed the rep because they've got to be easy. They could easily put it back down if they wanted to. I think it's an ego thing to drop it, but I think they still completed the rep. Yeah, Do you get me? Actually, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the, it's, but it's, I've seen some easy. people are getting it up and they've, not, they've got their lockout. Oh, it's a soft lockout. It's called soft lockout. If you've got soft knees or soft hips, then soft lockout and doesn't count. Have you seen like Kyle Ritchie's stuff? And he's like, he's got this thing, he's called it uh, soft belly. <laughs> Just when you said soft lockout. Does he call it soft start, belly? He's, he's calling folk soft belly. He's like, see if you don't have a soft belly, come to me as a PT. <laughs> soft belly cunts actually quite like that. Right? So no, he's like, he stuff's actually quite good. See if uh, I'll just... If he, I don't know if he watches these. He, he might. He might shout out to Kyle Richie. Ah, yeah, he, he's on oh, Instagram. He's, 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 he's funny. He's, he's routine. He's good. Uh, yeah, I good. know. It's been good to see how his uh, content changes, which is brilliant. Right, next one. You do not need to max out to get strong. So this is a point that you put down. Oh, so fine. obviously, you you came from. You were influenced a lot by powerlifters and not, strength not athletes. Not even back then, mate. No, no. Back, no. What, what back, is, back then, I don't even know what I was in my <laughs> gear. I, 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 <laughs> I just, can take on anything. <laughs> I mean, back then, mate, I was genuinely just, like, I found, like, I love deadlifts, and I wanted to look good for birds, and that was it. So where did the, like, lifting heavy? Do you think it was a mere ego thing? Oh, yeah, definitely, I think... just an ego thing. Because, you, I mean, we obviously spoke about it in the last podcast, you just wanted to lift more than your pals, or the all you wanted just to lift heavy and you just consistently go heavy and then you'd like that. So I remember I had a 215 deadlift and then like six months later... Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember, honestly, I remember I hit it but obviously my form was probably shite and I right. fucking rattled it after But six months later, I couldn't even lift 210. Right. Do you know what I mean? Aye. So it was like all just pure... Ego driven, Aye. like it was my max, 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 max. Yeah, it's like feel like you're. you're no, if I'm going to hit a PR, I'll go right. I'm going to hit a PR months, in four months. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like so, as you said, the program is completely. Like, it's important, isn't it? It's so important. Do you know what? I never really pieced that together until I met you. I always knew it deep down, but see when we were having that debate on um, should you one rep max and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and you said that the main reason that people hurt themselves is because they don't program it correctly. Aye. I've I've always knew that in the back of my brain, but. When you said that, a light, a light bulb was like, it makes so much fucking sense. Aye, Why, aye. like, even though subconsciously I was doing that with my programs for me, aye. but when I was kind of looking at other people, it's like, all oh, right, like, I even, like, like mates that I've got who've been training for years and years, it's like, I'm going to try and get the 50s a day. And it's like, why? Like, why? Why? I like you program it and aye. you will get the 50s. Like, have, like, rather than going, I might get it, I might not, like, have it properly programmed in your system and you'll have a better chance of getting it. So, I've got. To, I've started a couple of my people but I've done Robin there on a strength programme a proper strength programme using percentages and uh, none, none special just a simple programme man. it was just four by fours and I said to her look see the first week it's going to be easy I'm like you're going to fly through these sets mm-hmm. but I said see the last week you're going to do a weight that you couldn't do this week four weeks later and it'll feel alright mm-hmm. and I says that's how strength works you need to build yourself up I said if so on the last week I programmed her to do 80 by four by four. Mm-hmm. But on the first week she done six and a half by four by four. Aye. Right? And the six and a half flew. But if she done eighty that she could have been there. Yeah, because it's the stimulus response and building that up. Exactly. So <clears throat> building it up and then she does eighty by eighty and then she's gonna evaluate a wee mini deal and then we're gonna go back up and go back up. And that's where you would never do that at start. You just go I'm gonna <laughs> go in and I'm gonna <laughs> smash it. Pre workout and I'm ready to and, after. in your mind you go, I can lift it. Right. You can't. I know. You can't. It's impossible. Like, like last week I'd done this, so I'm going to do this. So, but, but last week, because you've done that, you're tired. <laughs> so, you can't. Right, so, there has just, to be a cap. You just don't understand that. This, this is, uh, you, don't, you don't really understand that when you start lifting out. And this is something I wish I did understand more. 100%. It was like, 100%. It was like right, because anything you listen to, it's like you need to do more than the previous session or the previous week that you've done. So, but you don't, like, you're a wee guy, like, or a wee girl, and you don't really understand that. You can't take on the world. There has to be a limitation of where you are, and then that's where programming comes in to dip aye, and dab. But over time, you've got that stock graph journey. I slowly, things. slowly get up. Aye. Like I, I can imagine you've failed lifts, and you're like, "How?" It's pure demotivating. Mm-hmm. It's, it does the opposite but of what it's meant to. Back, back when you have training partners. So when I failed lifts on a 
shoulder press or a fucking bench press they're taking the weight for me mm. and it's like you fucking got that and then that feeds into your ego so mm. you're like right mm-hmm. you got that last time help aye, me with aye, this aye, next aye. one and then you're like why am I lifting this fucking weight aye. there is a bit of value feeling the weight in your arm yes and getting over that mental hurdle slightly I, I did like um, for my for my bench press when I hit 120 couldn't get it man I was getting 110 and then but this is where program was terrible but, but I was working out with a guy and he says look see if you feel the weight and control the negative he goes I'll spot you here and this is when I started to understand different ways I of train. lifting technique Aye. and lifting training because I thought to sh- get stronger you need to push the weight you that's need it. to lift the weight that's that's the only component I didn't understand the eccentric part to it so the, the lowering the weight and slowing it down and uh, so he jumped on the bench and he, he, we loaded up 120 and he says right I'm going to take this off and he helped me and I was holding it and he goes I'm going to let go and I want you to just slow that down to your chest and fucking sweat right my arse and I was <laughs> my shitting myself so I couldn't get it so I slowed it down he lifted it back up and he's like right go again see literally the next week mate the stimulus of that sent to my body just being young and new to lifting Aye. I got it Aye. I managed to get it and I was like what the fuck Aye. I got that one you had, you never and that then over before. that it was consistent I was like wow there is so much value to slow and shit that, down that, 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 and this was just piecing, piecing together my journey um, but speaking of pre-workout um, you do not need supplements to get stronger to get more muscle when you're starting lifting so see when you're a wee guy can you remember going on like my protein and putting this whole bunch of stuff in your thing with no even my protein mate we went to, aye, to the dodgy we went website to no we went to guy's house aye, we went websites. even dodgier than aye, that aye. Um, but we were like we, we were completely married that we doing all sorts of shit like I remember just cleaning my car my car was spotless and we drove down to this guy's house picked up the protein powder and like stupid ideas when you're kids like do you think you could just put a scoop of protein in your mouth and wash it down with water then it's spanked and done it's like aye scoop in the mouth <laughs> oil the window <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, um, yeah. so going through that journey but I buy you know, like just like somebody like the, I maybe grew up in a time just like even though it was only a couple of years before you like people would sell protein in the gym and stuff ah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, it was here look the gym's actually moved so quickly I know it's the digital like, age though so like, quickly being able to order stuff online mm-hmm. you couldn't it wasn't as easy as that ah, like, you had to go to a shop that's why I had to go to a guy's house or Aye. go into like, even going into Asda and stuff like that you didn't really have it there wasn't anything but in there there was, um, there was protein shops more so we used to go down to the protein shop and you'd what one did you gravitate towards mass gainer 9000 right mass so gainer 4, ba- back in the day it was <coughs> hurricane especially being a, ki- a skinny guy hurricane XS it was for me mate it played you on it? your insecurities nah no. you heard it so hurricane XS you're like fucking hell look at that name it's got this 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 in it and it's going to blow you up and I was like right I'm it's going to get a picture of a big fucking muscly guy see, see the thing was it didn't even have that but it was just the name it and then I was like right so I'll get protein I've got hurricane XS I'll get creatine but then I'll go at the weekend and fuck it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But then I'll spend all this money and then I remember always the guys like, eat big, get big, and I'm like, right, fucking hell, I'll, I'll eat big to get big. So what will I do? I'll go and I'll get 20 chicken nuggets to eat big and get big. <laughs> Shite, Do you know what I mean? So much right. So what, what other supplements did you take? So, so I would say my pal took way more supplements than what I did he got the creatine pills he got the jack see the old jack 3D ah, see yeah, the yeah, proper like ah, um, yeah. crack cocaine or so, something like that so it? we got a it was called so it started in Dust V2 mm-hmm. which is a strong pre workout as it is I don't even think they sell the one that we used to get at air here so there was obviously something dodgy in it but now they have the there was a Dust Extreme mm-hmm. and it had all these new tropics in it <laughs> And you'd be wired to the moon. <laughs> I remember the first time I took it, I was like, I'm in my nut. So I, I would go home and I'd be sitting with my dad and that. And I'd be like, ah. So be, the ironic, I'd, be pure, I'd be pure para. Aye, the ironic thing about this is I hadn't even discovered caffeine yet. <laughs> and I was taking fucking pre workout. I, I was that? the same. So I was like, the same. A coffee would have done this enough. I was stimulus. the same. I didn't understand that the caffeine done that to you. No, it's Do you know what I mean? I... You take pre workout and you go, I feel ah. so good. What's in this? <laughs> you just like, right, I need to buy this supplement. Then, then, you, I, then you understand. And you think of the thousands and thousands of pounds that you spent on supplements over the years. So if you invested that in a trainer at the start, Aye. and for two months, for oh. three months, that would have projected more gains and more understanding. Because you more need knowledge. to take these supplements and no gain anything because you need knowledge. If you get a trainer and you gain that knowledge, then Aye. you just do your own thing. So I remember. So I've obviously struggled with anxiety in that, right? But pre workout made it so much worse. <laughs> Heart pounding. Right? And I swear to God, I'd take pre workout and after it, I'd be an anxious mess for two, three, four hours. And I'd be like, what is wrong with me? So I, in terms of what, like, were you like shaking or just couldn't speak to him? Can you hold eye contact? Just fucking hold eye contact. I was ner- I was nervous. Jerry, every day, 
And I was like, my anxiety is fucking horrible. So when I came off pre-workout, right, and I, I can't even mind why I done it. I was like, I, I read that pre-workout is bad for your anxiety. I'm like, right, so I'll stop taking it. And uh, for two or three weeks, I had severe depression. Hmm. Like, mate, come down at my nut. <laughs> and then after that, I realised I didn't have that bad anxiety. I had anxiety for other things, but I didn't have social anxiety that I thought I had. You just getting amped up. Right, right aye, so it, 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 I amped up my social anxiety. So, you know, I was in the gym, I didn't want to talk to him. But no for the fact that I didn't want to talk to him, for the fact that I couldn't physically, because I was like, oh, fucking nervous. Do you know what I mean? I was like, pure nervous. So imagine I'll ask him up to him, ah, ah. But see, when I once to come off it, I'm like, that's so fucking bad for you. And then I would watch other people go through the same thing. I would go, they're fucking nervous. Ah, they're, you know what's Aye, they're really nervous. I'm like, it brings on anxiety and people don't have anxiety mm -hmm. because it's such a high amount of stimulants. Aye. You're taking these pre-workouts and you just don't understand anything that's in it and they're just sold so you work out. Like, if you can't work out without a pre-workout, like, what, do you fucking really enjoy it? Aye, and I think there's a fine line with it. Like, supplements, they're not all completely written off, but especially when you're starting out, um, very rarely do you need supplements for the first couple of months, for the first year, because you're sort of working the, out. But the thing is, there's supplements that you can take for your health. Yeah, it's hard to kind of and you don't even every eye. See hit. the supplements that you should be taking when you're training? You should be taking them when you're not training, mm -hmm. and you should just be upping the dose because your body's running at a higher rate. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. So my supplements I take now are vitamin D, free, vitamin C, zinc, omega threes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some collagen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do things like that. And that's the only supplements that I'll take. And maybe like a like some blood flow supplements before, like a Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a guy on TikTok. Have you ever seen him? No, what's he saying? I don't know if he's take, I don't know if it's a piss take, but I think he's actually been serious. He's like, so before I train, I have chicken wings. I heard of this, I. And then he's at a pre workout, and then he puts a Viagra in a pre workout, and then he just keeps going with his video, and he doesn't say anything else about it. I was like, ah, mate, did you just skip? We just the part? Skip, we just got skip here that you're. So he, and he's just in the comments. I I take Viagra before I go to the gym. So well, so there's um, beetroot. Uh, mm. no, I beetroot beetroot's meant to be good for increased blood flow good pumps and all that Aye. Um, I don't know I, I've listened to podcasts and listened to er, and read some research on the increased blood flow and the benefits that you get from muscle build but to try to recite that right now I, I can't no, even, I'll be too my, hands, my hands even coming but I think we can add one more thing is don't chase the pump that, aye, so don't chase so the you, pump you, doesn't you, mean you're building muscle. You'll see Arnold and he'll be like, chase the pump. The pump, the pump is the key. Aye. No, it isn't. No, it's you've got to get the pump whether you train or no. So you're going to get made a pump if you just do biceps the full time. But you're not going to build your biceps five exercises in. No. Your biceps and you think that. That's, That's why you do arm days. It leads on to the next point. Before we go on to that next point, on the supplement side of thing, I would say one thing I wish I'd done before I started training was get my bloods done. I really wish I'd done that. Like the, what I understand about the human body, like oh, you're, aye, you're taking you're taking all these supplements just now, and that's in there. Knock at you because I've done the same as no, well. I but know. You aye, really don't know, know what's no, going to work for you know, until you feel it. I until because you're like, oh, is it because of the D three or is it because of this? I'll hundred percent. I know. I'll hundred percent be doing that once every bit of money. Aye, so like, I'll hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like I'm taking rather these... than spending it on supplements for anyone to start now. Johnny, get that snapshot of where your bloods what your blood work, get a full blood work panel that shows everything and then get it, I would say then regularly get it See, done See, I think a, a lot of people basis. listening will be like, why would I need to do that? But then once you've trained people who come to you with, who've lived a normal life, but then something's happened to them and they've been fucked, I've got then, good... then you, then you realise, look, people who are listening, if you are living an unhealthy-ish lifestyle and you are eating For, shit, Forget unhealthy, anyone. Like, the way I look at it and the best analogy to communicate this to you get an MOT in your car every year, mm. right? Huh? You don't just fucking go into the garage and go, can you put a set of brakes on that? Because I think my brakes are a wee bit because they're making a funny noise. But then it's the fucking drive shaft or ah, whatever yeah, it could yeah, be. Yeah. You get an MOT, you get, you get you a, get a, checked, a, a mechanic checked. to get to run through a list of checks to make that car road legal. Uh, the fact that that's not like that. maybe necessarily mandatory for your health is uh, bizarre when you think about it. Like you, so It's like having a road map. Like so I actually like it. see... Uh, KD, what's his name? No guy uh, talking about. Oh, guy yeah. does the marathons. Ah, I'll get you because he's, he's right. So he made an amazing like. video today, and I loved it. And he was like, "People in households are like, you need to get a good job. You need to get a good job. You need to make good money. Mm -hmm. But why does nobody say you need to have yeah, good fitness? You need good to have health, good health." Aye. So it's coached coached by KDH on Instagram. He made that honestly um, amazing video on it this morning. I watched it. I'm like, Tristan Hill. That is fucking spot on. Yeah, I know. I was it's, like, that is that is bang on the money. I was like, why does everybody go? You need to make money. But why do you know you need to eat well? You need why to train. You need to look after your health. You need to be happy. 
Do you know, know what I mean? And a side note crazy. this as well, like, one thing I wish I did do, and I didn't put this on the list, but it just brings up another point, is... There's so many points you could come know, up with in this, can I? So, I started working out because I wanted to look good. Aye. And I wish I actually changed that mindset, but even saying that out loud, you were never going to... That's, that's probably... Luckily, because I was so married to looking a certain way, it you led me, it, it led me down it. this path. So I, I was but, the same, I was the same. But understanding that looking a certain way in fitness doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be healthy no. and going after a all-round health approach where sometimes a couple of beers with your pals Aye. is a healthy option. Sometimes That's eating off plan is a healthy option. I was just about to say, like, people will get so married to the bodybuilding scene and they'll forget about their friends, family, their relationship, yeah. and then their relationship struggles, and they're like, well, fuck the relationship, I want to be in this shape, and then you're like, well, you've got nothing once it's over. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's like not healthy. I know, I know. Um, so back to back to the point of saying that sometimes overdoing it on your body, so another point we've got here is less is more when you're starting out. You 100%. Don't need, and then I've put you here, and I'll go into the bodybuilding splits in a wee bit. Aye, but, aye, 100%. So, to, I'm kind of split on this one. So, even though I wrote it down as a point, like we spoke about this before, when you're younger, when you're starting out, you've got more time in your hands. So you're gonna, and and it's it's quite a social aspect of it. Like I gravitated towards going to the gym with my pals as opposed to going nights out. Mm -hmm. Now, more of my pals went nights out, but a lot of them have fucking well, addictions to drugs and stuff like that. Now they need to drink on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and I and I think that that could have been an easy path for me. I always say to my dad, like the time I was like, I turned it pretty well. I gravitated towards gaming and lifting weights, and like even though I done a cycle of steroids and stuff like that, I could have went down a darker hole. Like, <laughs> aye, I had it aye. fucking pretty easy, aye, like, aye. pretty easy when we grown up. Um, but um, I think about that like all the time. Like I would do six, seven sets for my fucking chest aye. when I was starting out. And if I actually done a little bit less, grew less amount of time, I would have grown quicker. I, I was saying, mate, you, you do that full chest day. You do mm. that five exercises in your chest. You <laughs> would. That's what I would do. I would do flat bench, incline bench, decline bench, flat dumbbells. Uh, <laughs> I like cable flies. Ca ca cable flies, cable chest presses, machine. chest machine. And like I, I'm mad stupid variation. There. I press doing nothing. Uh, it's like it's fend press, not. Do you know what I mean? Like you pressing, mean? pressing your, your dumbbell out. But and, see, I'd like, and then, then I'd be six exercises deep. My back. Oh. What a chest pump, but then they are weak as fuck. But see the thing with this as well, see if, I, see if this was me and my mates and we're like, right, we've got to do less, less is more. So if I'm listening to a podcast and I'm I'm in my 19, 20 and I've got guys that are telling me to go in for half an hour, it doesn't make sense. So you're yeah. like, shut the fuck up, look how skinny you look. You're, you're <laughs> like, I don't know if that's some thoughts that will go put through people's minds. Oh, everybody's but, minds. Um, on the other hand as well, like we used to spend an hour and a half, two hours in the gym and you kind of got to know the community of the gym and I think that's maybe the one blessing that doing a bodybuilding split or doing a split because you, you can't you're get this, time. you're in all the you're time. time, you start seeing the same faces, people start speaking to you and you start bonding relationships aye, with aye. people that you don't necessarily would have, aye. like and they're, they're, everyone's in there to kind of better their health, like this whole notion that gyms can be a fucking um, arrogant place in that. Uh, there's only a few gyms that uh, I think the type of gym will attract that but there's only a few gyms that come to mind that I think will have that I don't know every, many gyms at all every person you know will I mean? have it like commercial gyms like you've got a, such a wide range of people, people. that go um, as Ross was up at the weekend actually and I was, he's going to JD now and I was asking how it is and he's like fucking busy man he says so busy he says the full place is packed and I was All like interesting I was like so I want to get down there because actually like, there's a bunch of, bunch of people in there so aye, 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 we aye, got aye. a podcast by the way aye, 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 aye. <laughs> here's how you can bet we, we'll, we'll be going up with our, with our <laughs> merch but the one thing that I would say about cutting down is I used to train like five times a week and I'd go f uh, Saturday or Friday or Saturday and uh, I'd get absolute my tits and then I'll go back in the Monday and I'll train five days a week. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why I was making no progress and it's because I was never giving my body time to recover. So see if people come into me and like mate, people come into me and I'll be honest, I'm like, do you take drugs at the weekend? <laughs> and they're like, aye. And I'm like, right, cool, well, you know what today, you're, you're going to train at least one day less a week than you probably wanted to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, because your body's not going to have time to recover. And I said, if you want to make gains, then train hard in your three, four sessions. Think and then go out. And like, that you need to understand, it's like understanding it's understanding people have different lifestyles mm -hmm. and if you're going to live that lifestyle, don't live it for long, mm -hmm. but understand that you cannot make gains the same and definitely training five days a week like I was doing on that or was you, severely you, limiting you, my gains. I think to one, on one hand you're a wee bit more resilient when you're younger, but on the you're other no hand that you're no. no that resilient and no. you do overdo it, like chucking it in the weekend 
Um, like if, when you look at it, right? When you look at that kind of lifestyle, I know you did live that, live that kind of lifestyle. There, but there was a couple of occasions that like, I even You'd remember, like going to a party in Air with Ross, and the party it was a it was an abandoned and not not abandoned church. It was a church that got converted into this guy's eighteenth uh, or twenty first or something like that. And we all went to it, and it was fucking mental. There was about hundred folk. There was like proper like see but Project X, aye. like hundreds of folks. Somebody put it out on Twitter and hundreds of folks showed up. Police came and shut it down. We were drinking, obviously, couldn't they drive home, so we had to sleep in my motor. But it was on a farm road, and there was about 17 cars all lined up, and there was everybody just sleeping in their motor. And what we'd done, like, it was a shite night of sleep, we'd been drinking. What did we get up? Did you know what we'd done the next day? We got up and went to the gym, because we were like, oh, we can't miss the gym, we can't ah, miss yeah, it. I'm yeah. like, we had, there was no need, need, need to do that. No. We were fucked, we were just causing more stress in I, the body. I ruined so, it. Uh, exactly, and this is the thing, like, like anything you do is a stress in the body, so there has to be a fine line of doing as little as you can to stimulate that stress, which will then in turn return the so adaptations. The one thing that I learned now is like, and I have to teach this to my clients, what I eat the day before is how my workout's going to go. It's not what I eat in the morning. Mm -hmm. Obviously what I eat in the morning is going to give me that a slight burst of energy, but it's what I eat the day before. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would go out on the Saturday, and I wouldn't really eat on the Saturday because I had the butterflies, right? You get the butterflies, see when you're like a, a mad sesh head, you get the butterflies. What, when you're about to go out? Aye, aye, you get like, you're, you're right, nervous, you're, like, you're oh, nervous mate. You meet the one aye. night. <laughs> no, 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 I do with that, you're nervous because you're going to be on that. Oh, you think this right? could be the one I die at? No, you're oh. just like, I don't know, it's like, you know you're going to be high. So see when you're going to be high, you're already high. Interesting. So see how dopamine works, so see mm. like people who are going to take like cocaine. We need to add see, see, see when see. we get merch t shirt, we actually need to get a t shirt that just says dopamine. Ah, <laughs> dopamine! <laughs> but but that, that, this is actually the truth, so this is what happens. So, before you take cocaine or anything like that, there's no feeling. As soon as you hear it's on the way or you're going to get it, you get a rush of dopamine, that's where, oh, we're going to get it. You got a bag, you that's got a that bag. feeling, that's yeah. that feeling. Right. And you get all that nervous, you're like, fuck, we're going out tonight, we're getting that. But if you're just going to, like, for a dinner, you don't have that same rush because you're not going to get much with it. Right. You're going to have a good time, but you're not going to be. Like unnaturally high, right? Okay. So then you would go out and then you would obviously you would drink a wee bit, you eat, and then the next day you couldn't eat again. Mm. So what I would do is have a Chinese at night, right? <laughs> and I would have a Chinese, and that was all I would eat. And I would get up on the Monday, I'd probably struggle to have my breakfast. I'd maybe eat a wee microwave meal for lunch, have my peanut butter and rice cakes. Did you have like hangovers and that when you're younger? Like, can I be a wee bit more resilient? Or? No, see when you when you do that, mate, you, you're <laughs> fucked. See when you, when you try, see if you don't go to the gym, you feel alright because you go, oh, I can go home. <laughs> But see, you're like, I've got to go to the gym. So what I would do is, I would have a wee meal, peanut butter and rice cakes, and then I would go, right, I'm going to take my pee workout and go to the gym. Mm. And like you, you're fucked. Yeah, you're, you're gone. fucked. You're There's no need for it. So like, that, that's just my scenario, but there's so many scenarios Aye. where there people go and get smashed and get up and go to the gym the next day. You take and a they day rest and then go in the following day. And you, you lift more. You spend less in the gym oh. and you get more gains for it. Like, why, like, it seems bizarre. I always communicate this to clients. Like, like, there's no need for us to work out for 60 minutes when you're just starting. No. We can do the same, we can create the same muscle soreness or no. muscle uh, response or adaptation, whatever you want to call it, within 35 minutes, 40 mm. minutes, then you would need to be in an hour and a half. So, because no. I, I always said to like, some clients, like, what else can I do in the gym? And it's like, well, you, if you've done your four workouts, that's it. If you no. want to do some steps in the treadmill, do that. But no. other than that, you're good. You're that's a lot out. of my clients struggle, they go, I, d I don't feel like I worked hard enough. Because you don't get the soreness in the next uh, day. Uh, they don't, they're like, fuck it, I, I, I need that, I need that uh, feeling. It isn't like, always an indication, but there is the right intensity. To oh, like 100%, also 100%, 100%. Right, next point is um, what you do outside the gym is more important than what you do in the workout itself. So kind of touched on a wee bit of the point there. But Aye. when it comes to sleep, um, this is probably something I've only really pieced together since I became a trainer. I never mm -hmm. really, like you would see the posts pop up and sleeping. It seems every time I seen it, I was like, fuck off. Aye, <laughs> <they're> <laughs> <as well. laughs> Talk about sleep. Uh, you, don't, you don't sleep care. when I'm dead. You don't care. Place. You don't sleep care. when I'm dead because I said to before, I'm more creative when I'm at night. That's, that's maybe something that's been ingrained into me from a young age of like sneaking up with my Xbox and gaming to like two, three, four in the morning. Aye, aye. And just, I, I don't know, I guess it's just built into my, my routine and my mindset of like how my life works right. um, and I've still got that even though I've got my sleep button down but um, I'll know I can easily stay up till like 2-3 in the morning watching shit on TV or like um, uh, playing games or editing videos and stuff like that I, I'm a night person Aye. but I want to be that morning person as well now <laughs> recently <laughs> be recently knowing how much stronger I feel when I've got a good night's sleep has been another paradigm shattering moment in mm -hmm. my life where I was like Holy shit, man! It's mm. like, well, you don't think about it. It's like, why did? How did I manage that workout? Felt great. Amazing. You don't piece together why. What is? Oh, I had a good night's sleep. Aye. You never really, never really reflect back to it. You just think, 
oh, I'm feeling good I had a good, good workout. That was aye. a good pre-workout. I took, I must have had the right amount of caffeine. Aye, you don't aye, even exactly. think about nutrition. You aye. don't even kind of think about it. Aye, aye, um, aye. Obviously. So, aye, so what you do outside the gym is definitely more important than the workout itself. The workout is important, but everything like everything outside of the gym is just as important. I think uh, you can't out-train. No, you can't. I think one thing to take back on, see, so talk about pre-workout and then talk about sleep. If you take a pre-workout too late and people say to me, but I can sleep on caffeine, there's no just the feeling of staying up. Ah, it's it's the quality. fact that it stays in your brain. Mm -hmm. So what people will do is they'll have caffeine after five, they'll get so used to it, they'll still be able to sleep, but their sleep quality will not be as good. Mm -hmm. So they won't be building the muscle and the sleep that they could have been. Yeah. So you're taking caffeine, pre-workout, to go to the gym late at night, but then you're not sleeping as well. So whatever you've done in the gym, becomes defunct mm -hmm. and that's why so many people don't make progress and that's one of the reasons why I stopped making progress because I would go at 5 at night or 6 at night so I need to take my pre-work at 5 mm -hmm. and then I will try to go to bed at 10 Aye, to get up for work and stuff and like you, that. you've just had a smashing workout you've just took pre-workout and you're like I'm not ready to go to bed Aye. and then you would stay up you'd be like I'm shattered so what do you need to do again you need to take pre-workout for your session again and it's like it's a, a repetitive cycle it and is it's hard to try and break that. oh it's hard Right, next point, um, this is probably the sexiest topic to talk, talk about, and that is the earlier you start your mobility work, the better. Aye. Now, the reason I'm saying it's well, a bit, bit tongue-in-cheek here, it's no sexy topic at all. There's probably a better word than mobility, but any time I say mobility, my clients, and even like fellow trainers and peers and stuff like that, they're like, ah, get to fuck, man. I'm not in my 60s because we are young and we are a wee bit more resilient, especially because we've got a training back background as well. Like We don't feel the same aches and pains and we're more active in our jobs and stuff like that. Um, but mobility work and actually running through stretching or dynamic stretching or priming, whatever you want to kind of label this topic as, the, the earlier you do that, the healthier you're going to be mm. in your everyday movement. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just, I kind of took a wee bit of pride in like, oh, like turning um, into white mass. I'm like, oh, I'm dead stiff. Ah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm why? massive. Why I'm is fucking it, huge. Know. See, when you look at bodybuilders though, when you look at the guys do. and strongmen, uh, uh, powerlifters and stuff, and they're kind of in this, it's the, the forward shoulders and that, you're just like, when I look at that now, I'm like, he's going to have such a hard time in the next kind of five years when, when the strength grind isn't the, the, the main focus or the bodybuilding grind isn't the main focus. Like being able to reach above your head and kind of squat over or hip hinge and um, have your ankles travel. Do you, do you follow Eddie Hall? Do you like Eddie Hall? Um, I, I don't so follow him. He, he, he's sweating his mobility. He does the swimming and that to keep his... Oh, I've seen him swim. He's a fucking strong ah, swimmer. Yeah, so he's, he, he posted post a picture the other day and he's like, ah, starting them young. Uh, it's all about mobility and something else. And he, he sounds like... Maybe tennis. Gymnastics it will be then. Aye, so, the he's, so he's showing his son, he's telling his son, be mobile the now, and you'll be mobile forever. Mm -hmm. And as you say, seeing your 20, you're like, ah, shut the fuck I up. Know. I mean, my pal used to stretch for like, <laughs> ages before. <laughs> like, I'm like, mate, what are you actually so, doing, man? Know, we can't even be seen together anywhere. <laughs> but then there came to the, he, went, he took it too far, and he was doing too much mobility. Right. And it was actually causing him problems, because he was, he was fixing problems, but then he was... It was causing problems by doing the rank stuff. Aye, uh, so, and the thing with stretching as well, like stretching, like some athletes need tight hamstrings for the explosiveness and sharpness. For average people, like we, we, we probably do want to loosen up and, and right. stretch and prime our muscles and basically just switch that activation on for our muscles and our joints to be ready for the lifts that we're doing. Now this becomes more prevalent. I would say as I'm getting to the, the later part of my 20s here and starting to go into my 30s, it's more important than ever. And I'm actually quite excited you know to 30? see- I'm 30. <laughs> I'm getting on. 30 in September. He's getting old, but, um, Which is quite <laughs> crazy because, like, see, when you think back, when oh, I'm 30, I'll be, I'll be married and I'll have cunners of cows and all this, and I'm like, ah, you know what I'm doing. I mean, I know, like, I know, mate. I know, it's mate. It's quite scary. I, I know scary. that feeling well. But, um, I'm actually excited for the next couple of years because I guarantee you, like, some of my friends in, um, in my close circle, I think this is going to be when I'm going to start to convince them that. Working out isn't it about looking a certain way, and oh, I'm hoping right. my family start to see this as well. I think um, I think it will be. I think there's a big change to come in that. There's, there's more on fitness on that now, which big, is awesome. It's so much bigger than it ever has been, yeah. and it's such a good, it's an amazing message to get yeah. across people. So if you're if you're listening to this, like starting with some mobility work type, 
um, mobility so simple. exercises so and simple uh, YouTube fitness. and like some of them might be shit, some of them might be good, but find something that works. Type in hip mobility, calf stretching, us, ankle, ankle mobility, uh, and shoulders. They're the three main uh, ones. Exactly. Uh, the three main ones. Right. Um, second last point here. So wish we focused more on compound lifts. Yeah. As you guys know, we fucking love we love a squat, we love a deadlift. Yeah. Love a bench press, an overhead press. Maybe not as much a bench press. <laughs> that's because of all your back in it. <laughs> but when it when it comes to these compound lists as we call it it's, the, it's usually the big three but it's becoming the big four way overhead press Yeah. but compound lists in the sense that multiple muscle groups working at one time mm -hmm. and not just gravitating towards the machines and the little isolation the little pump muscles as you, yeah. as you referred to earlier Yeah. Um, compound lifts didn't really get into them for maybe four years after lifting and when I did and it could have been a combination that I had a foundation laid from understanding exercise and training five, six times a week then when I jumped to compound lifts, because it was so novice to me, I had connection to my muscles, so my fucking uh, my physique did change. It, it changed massively. And also that was helped with being a better understanding of nutrition and um, being on... Um, in fact, was I on that cycle when I'd done compound lifts? I don't know if I was, actually. I think that's maybe why I enjoyed it, because I was off a cycle and I was like, I feel like I'm on gear. Aye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the stimulus was so fucking good. Aye. But I, I don't think you'll ever beat those lifts and I think that's important to focus on them at the start. I think if you, you if did, you, you did, surprisingly, like you kinda I, I, gravitated towards them. I gravitated towards a deadlift and a bench. Never really squatted that much for that long and then started squatting and it was pretty it was alright at it. Like it, it was alright. Like I squatted a wee bit. Like I would skip squatting Mill and Erring. Definitely. Mm -hmm. no, sorry, I'm sorry. I was skip, <laughs> I was I was definitely skip squatting Mill than deadlifts and I would skip bench to deadlift. And I was just deadlift, but mm -hmm. as I said, like I just fucking I, I plateaued hard on deadlift because of all the other factors. Mm -hmm. But because I was so focused on deadlift, when I went, I'm going to day squat bench deadlift. It was so much easier to transition to. Mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? I was like, you know what? I'm going to just I'm going to research how to actually do a squat. I'm not just watch somebody how to do a squat. I'm going to fucking take a wee course on how to squat. Mm -hmm. And I done it, and I was like, fuck man, this is so much more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Because like, if you if you ever do your squat. You go, right, there's an issue there, there's an issue there, and you fix that, and there's more to think about. And then you're like thinking, right, I'm going to squat, I'm going to squat your behaviour, but I'm also going to look at my squat and go, where am I going wrong? Where can I fix? And then that's something else to look into, and then you fix that, and you're like, oh, it's not just I squatted more, it's I squatted better. Aye. And you squat better, and you squat better, and you're like, I'm fucking really good at squatting. Aye, I and there's no, I don't think there's any better feeling than being good at the lifts, no. not just strong at them. No, you're like, no, I'm right. good at them. Aye. I took a lot of pride in the fucking deep ass to grass squat. Um, he did. He did. I don't know. There's, I don't know, a, why. I don't know what it is. There's a severe pride in it. But see, peace and see, like, see the pursuit of getting a deep squat because mm. you need to work in your mobility. You need to kind of lower the weight. <coughs> you need to. Your ego has to be taken out of it. You need to work in all these different movements. Big time. But your body going like, see, see the day. Like I, I told this story before. I don't know. I don't know why we end up skipping leg day. Is it because maybe the soreness? It's hard. Interest, it it's hard. Your, I, I, I guess. It's, hard, I guess it's probably one of the hardest muscle groups because it's in action every fucking day. It's the biggest muscles that sit within your body, so it requires more torque and force and all this good stuff. But I never remember that. I never forget the days. Like man, every cunt like seeing here that you should squat. You should squat, and I was like, right, fuck it. Let's let's try and squat. And I couldn't hold the bar. Do you know, the, do you know what the funny thing is though? Like you're, we're saying you should squat, you should squat, and you're told you should squat, you should squat. We're going into the idea where you're told you shouldn't squat, and oh, you shouldn't deadlift, and you shouldn't bench press. Mate, do you know what I mean though? Terrible. But like back in the day when you were you started training, you were told you shouldn't, you're like, ah, I don't think I should. And now we're going into the idea, you shouldn't. It's because there's so much information. It's mental, isn't it? It's There's mental. too much information. But being able to hold the bar in my back was so uncomfortable. And I think this is why a lot of people don't, <coughs> don't, Squat, like you said, because it's a hard, it's a longer journey oh, so to get longer. a good squat. It's a longer journey the, to, the to squat is the hardest of the three. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Now holding that bar on my back, I couldn't do it that much that I had to change the Smith machine squats, unrack the pin, push my hands away, and lean back like a fucking hack squat. And I was like, yes, and I'd just be putting the plates on, doing <laughs> wee half reps. And then over time, started hearing this word mobility, started hearing about priming your muscles, properly warming up. And I'm like, I'll give it a go. And I'm feeling weird doing it. And I'm like, holy shit, that feels better. That feels better. It's like, that was only 10 minutes. Mate, imagine then fucking glute bridges on the flare. <laughs> to you're you're videoed me. Imagine how fucking stupid I feel. No, but that's, I, thing, that's another thing. Like, see when you're in a commercial gym, 
you, when you're warming no up for the when you're warming up for the big lifts, aye. you'll look like a fucking idiot. Aye, but and that is where people go. I'm just gonna patch it a bit. But I think you looked like an idiot deadlifting and squatting ten years ago. Oh, aye. Now that that's <coughs> ten years ago, you, you, you're, you're five years ago. Aye, aye, aye. But now that that's such a big component, I think the next piece is definitely mobility work and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's something I'm excited for in the next. Because that's what I, I try. I try and say to my clients who obviously don't go to gym twenty four. I try and say, look, get some bands. And do this, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to look that. Every gym should have resistance bands. See, if your gym doesn't have resistance bands, get in the gym. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, no, but, but in one hand, like resistance bands, like they're meant to be super durable, but because they keep getting used, like man, I had to replace them every so like fucking quick, man. Because I was like, I'm, I actually remember saying to a client, because it's, it's quite scary when you use resistance bands at the start because they might ping back. And I'm like, these things have life guarantee. They do if you ever buy a resistance band off of Amazon. It says uh, lifetime guarantee. So I'm like, ah, it's got lifetime guarantee. And it pinged me and I was like, ah, fuck that, wasn't it? Like the client uh -huh. doing that because uh -huh. that would have scarred them for life. Aye, I'm aye, touching aye, resistance aye. bands. You would have. have. Um, but aye, resistance bands is, is definitely an important piece of kit to have in your in your. Toolbox. You don't see many people using them? Nah. No. You... Well, I, I see more people using them, but they do the standard up and overs. That's it. They do standard that up and overs. It. But there's so much, like, especially reading see Scott University's book just now. Um, and the different dynamic movements in terms of strengthening your joint and recovering and rehabbing more mobility is fucking it's unlocked tunnels of like movements for me that I'm going to be trying out over right. the next couple of weeks uh, when I'm feeling better. I think <laughs> the one thing we'll, we'll add is uh, mind we were speaking about the when I was doing the Bradford presses behind the neck. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously there been exercises that have been demonised and you go I'll never do them, never do them, and then when you become a PT you go they actually have a place. Mm. I'd say that's something that I've seen like, a good I, few exercises that I've wrote off when never done them. Yeah. And then once I became a PT and I've looked more into mobility, I've go, that's what that exercise is for. But you've yeah. got these influencers saying, why would you ever do this exercise? Aye, so, and it, but, it also gives everybody else, oh, I'll never do that exercise. See if you've done the exercise, your, your shoulders would be better. I think as well, like there's a there's a whole, like um, I know you like some of the guys, but there's a whole biomechanic um, lifters, like communicating, I, I think, like I, I the think most could, optimal. I, but the, no, the, the think, point I'm trying to make is like there's a there's a there's a group of fitness people aye. that's out there that's trying to go the most optimal way to go X, the aye, most aye. optimal way to lift in the gym. And the truth is that every exercise is not a bad exercise. Every exercise does have its purpose, but it comes down to the programming. You need, like find, it, you need to find like that you purpose. Like you say, like getting somebody who can hold a bar on their back, get them to shoulder press behind the back of their neck. No point in doing that, working the mobility first. Aye. But every like having the ability to press behind your neck is going to help aye, your shoulders aye, even aye. more. You will not get a shoulder, well, you're very less likely to have a shoulder injury. Exactly. There's, there's an extreme that, like what's the, oh, what's the deadlift called where you're rounding your back? What's that called? A Jefferson, Jefferson curl. Um, when I seen that, I was like, what the f Fuck off! Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why would you want to add load to Mate, a round? Ba position? Back in the day, I'd be like, ah, "Oh, that's an odd." Well, we've got loads of day. Aye. See, this is what I hate, right? And uh, this is going to offend quite a lot of people. Let's do it. If your coach says, "If one of your coaches cues and a deadlift is keep your back straight," oh, you don't like that one. That is the worst cue ever. <laughs> I hate that cue. I don't know what cue you use, but I hate it. I, I say, hate that I say back. I have said, don't get me wrong. Like um, you probably started I, using it. No, no, I have said back straight. But when I'm saying straight, I've always communicated my client that your spine isn't isn't it, it's not like it's not aye, like straight. Aye. What you want you want to think about straight is you get a wee bit of curve at the top and it kind of it's like aye, a snake aye. type of thing. Aye, aye, it's yeah. neutral. It's I, I, neutral. I, I think neutral I think is. straight back is way off. I'll see people big deadlifters deadlifting solid, and you get the people in the comments saying his back's not even straight, and I'm like. <laughs> oh man so actually it's a good point to bring up because a couple of years ago like it's only about a year and about two two, uh, two years ago that having a kind of slightly rounded posture into my deadlift I realised that that was actually okay huh? but I was like oh fuck I need to keep my because mine, 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 when, we, mine, when we, were, we started in the gym and uh, you were like to me fucking like, my back's rounding a wee bit no no it wasn't you were like because my dog's like your back's no straight in the video Oh, and no, you were like, your back doesn't need to be straight. I was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Somebody understands. Yes! <laughs> back doesn't need to be straight, but like, it was uh, your back as well that she was stuck. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, like, that, uh, there's, you, you think that form is just one thing, and one that black is and white, it, black and white. Right. So, when you watch people, and you're like, they are doing that rang. I made, I used to watch people and go, what is that dead left? What is that? What is that squat? And they'll go, fuck, man, that's all right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Aye. I know, I know, it's so, so like, you can the, the, it, like straight, the straight back king on a deadlift is, is 
It's I don't too, think it's. I don't think it's a bad cue, but it's definitely overused, and people don't far understand. Far too overused. Far I think too when overused. you say the word straight back, mm -hmm. people associate it aye with that posture when it should be associated aye. with a neutral, like neutral, neutral, neutral position. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. Then I think we'll wrap. It. Well, the last one there was nutrition, but we touched on that a wee bit there. Like ah, yeah, you said, yeah, 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 when nutrition we... is obviously you cannot. They always said I always remember the quote that abs, cannot are, abs are made in the kitchen aye. and all that. Truth is, abs are also made by sending the right stimulus program in it. But you do need to, no, you cannot out train a bad diet. And no. it, I didn't really. No, was, especially for your mental health as well. Aye, but I was come, we were both coming from the skinny bit. Aye, right? aye. So, see, when you're told that nutrition, like you say, 20 chicken nuggets, it's like you're eating everything under the sun. <laughs> whereas if you just track your calories and slowly, progressively increase them over the weeks, you would have gained the weight that you wanted to gain. Aye. It's harder, yes, but just kind of going, right, fuck it, dirty bulk, dirty bulk, like aye, just going to mass gain or 4,000 or that aye, sort of stuff. It's, it's, it, you just eat the biggest amount of shite to get your calories <clears> in. Aye. Because see, when you're, like, when you're younger, your nose, you don't have as much money. Is that down? Is it going up? Sorry? Or is it just changing posture? Aye, aye. <laughs> so, like, you just eat whatever you can afford. Mm -hmm. Like, 20 chicken nuggets for a thousand calories is was 420. Do you know what? So was, that was all right. Uh, We're on the go. That's all right. Yours was a jug of milk and two chances of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have that every lunch. And this is why I didn't <laughs> get any supplements too much because I, that, I was like, I'm fucking Jack. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'm, I remember taking pride that my bench press was stronger than some of the biggest guys in the gym. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah. I mean, I'll be able to fight, but I'll be able to push them fucking hard. <laughs> I still aye. say that. Um, but aye, it's funny. It's funny actually to look back at this. It brings up a lot of memories. It does, it does, it does. So, it's quite funny to look uh, back how you trained, how you <laughs> ate. It's just how you done everything. You're so like, oh my ho God. Hopefully you've taken some of that, uh, some of our experience, and you can apply it to your lifting, wherever you're at in your journey, whether you're 10 years in or you're just getting started. I'm sure there'll be some points that we spoke about there. And you'll definitely make mistakes along the way. Oh, definitely, definitely. And that's the beauty of lifting. You have to like get life. your lifts wrong. You have to kind of have bad posture in them to exert energy to then go, right, fuck that, didn't feel too right, and then kind of work on that. Um, so if we missed any, if there's any that you've found that you, you think we should have, we should speak about, leave it in the comments and, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, if you're looking to find us, you can find us on Instagram. You can find me at Coach Crosser. You find me at Raw Gym Fit. See you guys soon. Have a nice one.